Uh, welcome everybody, welcome. This is uh, LA2M. And is anyone not supposed to be here for LA2M? Anyone here for the accounting convention? That's next door. But um, welcome, this is LA2M. We meet every week um, at Wednesdays at lunchtime. And my name is Derek Maribon. I helped start this group. It's been about um, six years now, six years for LA2M. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, anyone here for your very first meeting? LA2M first timers. That's a lot of people, look at that. Thank you, welcome, welcome. We do meet every Wednesday, come on out. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn. We just created a meetup group. So if you found us on, did anyone find us because of meetup? Good, okay, wonderful. Follow us on meetup.com, it's a great, uh, you can kind of just say you're coming and it'll auto-populate your calendar so you don't forget. Yeah. Right, Meetup was just recently hacked, uh, so I think it's back up now, but they had a denial of service attack and they were down for like four days. Um, so we have a Meetup, we have a website, you can follow us on Twitter, at LA2M, and also we have a Facebook group. So please feel free to tweet today, uh, use the hashtag LA2M and you can tweet along and tweet some of the points from our speaker. Okay, there, there is some seats up front and they're adding a table in back, okay, sorry. Um, so let's see, what, what should I tell them about LA2M? Well, we're, we're a 501c3 nonprofit group, so we're a marketing education group. So our purpose is to provide essentially free marketing education. So that's why we bring in people that have like genius level intelligence, like the speaker you're about to meet. We bring in speakers, we teach you things, and you get to come here and you also get to um, network as part of it. You get to meet some really great people. And I promise at the end of the program at 1245, we get to go around the room and everyone can introduce yourself. So you can look forward to that. So if you're if you're looking for a job, maybe you're looking to hire someone, maybe you just have some good news to share, um, you can briefly share that with the group. And we get all the way around the room in 15 minutes. We always finish by one o'clock. So that's my promise to you. You'll be out here by one. Sound good? Great. Great, great, great. So Jim is up here. Jim's going to say just a couple things about uh, LA2M and how we support ourselves. Thanks, Eric. My name's Jim Musial, and uh, I get to fill in today for uh, Stacy Collett, who is our uh, LA2M treasurer but uh, I have the honor to get to be heard today. But the way we do fund ourselves, because we are a nonprofit organization, is we, we pass the hat, literally. So today we've got the, the Bud Light UFC bucket that's coming around, and uh, what we ask for is, is, it's free to be here, but what we do ask for is if, if you could spare a $5 bill, that really helps us go a long way. We do have expenses, we do have an employee, um, and we do, uh, we do have the expenses of putting these events on. So. We're going to pass this around. If you put a couple bucks in, great. If you put a five bucks in, great. If you put a 20 in, we're happy for that. So, But if not, that's okay. Maybe next time. But we're glad you're here today. So please support us this way. We really appreciate it. Derek should talk a little bit about sponsorship, too. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. So we do have sponsors. And if you are an LA Time sponsor, our, our email newsletter goes out to around 1,800 people throughout Southeast Michigan. So it's a great list. I mean, you're all on that list. It's, uh, it's qualified people that are into marketing and sales and our business. So if you want to sell to those people, if you're a sponsor, you get to blast that list or you get at least get a sponsor promotion on the, on the email. Um, you also get to promote your business at the events and uh, you can bring flyers, you can do it any way possible. So we are looking for sponsors. So if anyone wants to sponsor, it's only $250 for the month, $250. It's a great value. And Mary Lou, do we have any sponsorship openings this year still? Okay, so we just fill them up? Okay. We can double up on sponsors though. I'm not averse to doing that. <laughs> but because really, I mean, as an organization, we're running real close to the, um, the break-even point, so to speak. So more sponsors, the merrier in my mind. And speaking of that, because we didn't have a sponsor this month, so my company sponsored. Uh, so I'm going to talk for a moment. Just let me put on my sponsor shoes. All right. So I'm your sponsor this month. Um, and Derek Maribon, CEO of Ingenix Digital Marketing. I have a couple of our people here, just so you know it's not me. Laura Kirchner is our Chief Client Officer, and Kate Billerbeck is our uh, Content Manager. But we are an inbound marketing company. We really focus on helping small to medium-sized companies that want to grow their business. Uh, maybe they want to generate leads, they want to drive traffic, they want more qualified customers coming to them and asking for help. So we do that. So if you are interested, uh, in the newsletter there was a link for a free inbound marketing assessment. If anyone wants a free inbound marketing assessment, you can just click that link, fill out the form, and we'll set something up. Or come up and talk to me, or Laura, or Kate after the program. So that's my sponsor pitch. Okay, back to running the meeting. This is too much to do. Oh yes, yeah, so we have a t-shirt. Jim, Jim is gonna hand Colin the t-shirt. We'll get a photo of that real quick. Um, Bank of Ann Arbor bought us a bunch of t-shirts. And uh, we'll give Colin one real quick. So, uh, so again, if you do want to sponsor, 
Come talk to Mary Lou, she's our LA2M manager. She's our employee, come talk to her, talk to me if you want to sponsor. But um, let's get to our speaker. So this guy, I've known since, since I broke into the business. God, it's been a long time now. Um, but I met his mom, Jola. Jola, uh, and I don't know if you get, anyone know Jola in here? Some of you? Okay. It, she's, she's was the creative recruiter in Detroit. She was, uh, she placed everybody and knew everybody. She was wonderful. And because I was at Center for Creative Studies, or College for Creative Studies, I got to know Jola, and then she introduced me to Colin. Colin actually placed me in my first two jobs, um, which I'm forever grateful for. And, and we've stayed in touch over the years because he's such a great guy. Um, he now recruits and places at uh, some of the top agencies, uh, really in the country. You know, and he's obviously based here. He's got he's a real family man. He's got a big family, um, lots of kids, some grown already, some still at home. And uh, he's an incredible guy with an incredible amount of knowledge. It's interesting when I talk to him, he will he will dig down and really figure out what's going on with you. So I think he's a good guy to know. Anyone in the career search mode, he's a good guy to know. And um, I think he's going to teach us a lot today. So let's give Colin Lalonde a warm round of applause. Dustin, can everybody hear me? How's everybody doing? Fantastic. Great. My name's Colin Lalonde. I own a successful search firm. I place talent in advertising and marketing. I'm considered a subject expert. I'm an author, writer, and I also write a column in the free press. You've got a lot of information to pack in, but I think you're going to find it of value. There are three <coughs> powerful methods I'm going to teach you today. How to create a career story narrative. Second, how to put together a career journal so you never forget anything in your career again. And I call it the triple threat. <clears throat> how to put together your cover letter, resume, and portfolio. If you look at history, what has captivated people the most? Great stories. In the movies or reading a book, what are the elements of a great story? There's the hero, that's you. The hero confronts his trials and tribulations, that's you going through your career. And he becomes transformed and the story is resolved and that's of course the results that you're always going to show throughout your career. The first step is creating an outline of your work history starting from college forward. Remember, to list your accomplishments, I can't tell you how important listing your accomplishments are. Too many people explain their career in a job descriptive format. And again, I see this over and over again. Everybody describes a resume more in a dry, static format. And lastly, part of your story is also showing your personal side. Example, sports you play, hobbies, charities, causes you've donated to. A lot of people struggle with that. They say, Colin, should I put that in? Absolutely, it's a part of your story. It's a part of your narrative. Definitely incorporate your personal side. It shows your character. Again, it's a part of your story. When you go through your career timeline, you need to explain it as if every decision you made was calculated. Many of my candidates when I sit down with them, they explain themselves in a very fragmented way. And that is just, you know, the worst. And to give you an example of what I'm trying to tell you is you should explain yourself, and I want you to be truthful, but there's definitely a better way to explain your story. So, for example, I got out of college, I went here, I gathered these skill sets, then I went on to the next position, and I gathered those skill sets, and ultimately, this is where I'm at in my career, and that's why I'm sitting in front of you. But basically, you're presenting yourself as though you, you thought through every career decision you made in a very proactive way. Make sure you have a beginning, middle, and end to your career story. They all should have elements of the journey, how you went through the process, finding the solution, and most importantly, again, the positive outcome. After you've written your cover letter, timeline, pick the stories you feel that work best for the company you interview at. Now, I teach a technique called reverse engineering, and what that is is after you, you find out where you're going to go, you go to LinkedIn, and you can write this down, you find the company, and most importantly, the title that you're interviewing for, find people that have the same title, look at their profile, right? This is about a little bit about competitive intelligence, and then you can draw parallels, and when you go in for an interview, 
you're, 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 you're coming across more as a better fit. And again, obviously you have to be truthful, but definitely you're gonna have an edge over your competition if you're researching the people that already work at that company with that title. Remember, the elements of a story start with the challenge or obstacle, then how you overcame it. Memorize your stories so you're comfortable with them in your interview. My mom always told me memorization is the pearl of success. I, I myself used to always say, you know what, Mom, I don't want to do that. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do it on the fly. But I realized when you memorize, you're more prepared and you have the ability to present yourself in a more effective way. You will see a big difference in using this technique. Remember, the elements of a great story humanizes us and will help you make a stronger connection with the potential employer. Now, how to create a career journal. Now, everybody that I teach this to tells me how much more optimal they are in their career success. Most people do not keep track of their career accomplishments. This strategy helps you hold together your career story in a more compelling way. And if everyone kept track of their work accomplishments on a regular basis and always, they would always be prepared for anything. I have, if you look on my website, I have be prepared everywhere. I believe preparation and being prepared, and I already brought up the memorization, you're gonna have an edge over your competition. And most importantly, when you express yourself in an interview, if you, if you do this, then you're gonna have the edge over your competition. Now, how you pull together your career journal is first you need to create and find a cloud service. The one I use is Dropbox. There's Google Docs, and both have a, both are great to send all your work-related information to sort out later. Plus, they all are free, and they have two gigs of information, if not more. The areas, now this is important, as you journal, I'm gonna give you examples, but you can add more. As you journal, you need to, as you journal, you should be keeping track of it, big or small. These are the type of questions you need to ask yourself. Emails from a boss, coworkers telling you what a great job you did, project you completed and result. Letters of recommendation, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and they don't have letter, letters of recommendation. Letters of recommendation make my job a lot easier as a recruiter and definitely the employer is, it's going to be way more effective when you meet with them. And then other questions you need to ask yourself is phone calls you feel are important to remember, whether it's conference call with employees, uh, any, any phone call you're making. And if you feel it's important, put that in your journal. Keeping track of revenue you directly impacted for your company, obviously that's a real plus. And later that can prove your value to the company. So now this is how you do the career journal. The first thing you need to do is set up reoccurring alarms on your phone, computer, or tablet. Obviously the phone would be the best. Setting up reoccurring weekly alarms on your calendar every Friday will ensure you will not forget what you did. So basically what I'm telling you is, every Friday you take 10 minutes out and your alarm goes off. You go through those questions and then you set up, and then after you do that, you set up your alarm monthly. After that, you set up a reoccurring alarm at the end of every month. This will tie it all together over the last four weeks. So you do the weekly, then you do the once a, once a month, and you simply review the past four weeks in your career journal, so you have a month of work-related information. Is everybody following me? Every Friday, then you pull together the four weeks, and then you have a month's worth. And then lastly, at the end of the year, you have 12 months of work-related information. You then review the last 12 months of your work accomplishments and add it to your resume. I can't tell you a better way to start your first year, January 1, being able to review the last 12 months very detailed. Some of the caveats of it is when you're doing a performance review, you're going to be way more in control, and obviously everybody wants a raise, right? Is that true? Everybody wants a raise, and I think doing this, you're going to be way more effective. The other, the other caveat, there's multiple way, reasons why you should have a career journal. So let's say you have an issue with an employee, right? 
or the boss comes to you, he said, she said, you're going to be able to go back to that particular day or that week and review what went on because you're going to have it in your career journal. Does that all make sense to you? Okay, so the value is never again will you need to remember what you did yesterday, last month, or last year. It allows you to keep track of what you have accomplished. This allows you to remember the compelling story narratives in your career. And most importantly, you will never forget any of your work accomplishments again. Many times when I sit down with candidates and we start reviewing their career, they'll say, like, if you're a creative Colin, you know, I lost that, my partner has that. Can everybody relate to that? Or, you know, you, you, you start pulling together your information, you can't remember what happened the year before. So really the career journal is a very effective way to optimize yourself and, and be ready for any opportunity. The reward, if you do this consistently for the rest of your career, you will always be prepared and it will increase your confidence, obviously. Most importantly, you will never forget any of your work accomplishments again. This method will help you get your resume first in line for any possible job opportunity over those who procrastinate working on the resume. Again, I call on a candidate most of the time it's Colin, I gotta, I gotta you know, work on my resume, usually takes two weeks. Well, you're gonna lose an edge, right? At least I know that. And I'm gonna move on. So if you have the career narrative, you do the career journaling, you're gonna be very prepared, whether it's a recruiter, HR person, and I can't, I'd say 95% of the candidates I call on, they do not have an updated resume, and I think this will remedy that. Now, the triple threat. I believe this is what pulls together your career story. Your cover letter, your resume, online portfolio can be very effective if it is written in a clean bullet point narrative story format. Now, here's an example of a cover letter. Now, you would say, well, that looks a little unorthodox. That's something I wouldn't do. But Really, this has been very successful for me and my candidates. You've got your impact statement at the top, then you've got your elements of what you do for a living, and then you have your key competencies on the bottom. Now this sort of sets up, this is why I call it the triple threat, and it ties into that whole beginning, middle, and end. It, it is setting up the reader, and they clearly can see it in a clear way, setting up the interviewer to read what they're going to see in the resume. It's, 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 it's preemptively setting that up. Now, you can see in a resume impact statements, such as successfully launched 2009, foreign participation recorded at first ever with segment, exceeded sales goals, which is, you know, you definitely should put in fiscal information, not just what you've done successfully, exceeded sales goals, enhanced, exceeded retail segment shares. I believe resumes should not be paragraphs and paragraphs of information. It should be more bullet point, quantitative, and qualitative. This sets up the employer to what they will see in the candidate's online career portfolio. <clears throat> online portfolios allow you to show you the visual of your work you state it in your cover letter and resume. You see how you're building it? The cover letter is setting up the resume, <coughs> read the resume, and everyone should have an online portfolio. Online portfolio should be in a case study format. Now here is the visual of the impact statements of the resume. So some of those impact statements that I showed you in the resume now are coming to life in a visual way. Does that make sense to you? So this particular person, I like the way they set this up. And also I want you to pay attention to the bottom. He also has introduction, experience, accomplishments, point of view, case studies, which I'm showing you, and testimonials. I can't tell you how important those testimonials are. Um, so he starts out with his case study format with a, the situation. Then, as you can see, in the case study, he puts the objective, the strategy, the tactics, and the results. And I think you can see, as I've done this presentation, results are so critical. 
I mean, and, and if anybody's in the digital business, everybody seems to have the great story, but the story falls apart at the end. Derek, you know what I mean there? It's, it, it just falls apart because a lot of people don't have the result. Results are so important in how you present yourself. Now, again, the cover letter, resume, and online portfolio of your work, it pulls it all together. This will give you an advantage over your competition using these methods. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Again, my name is Colin Milan. This is my information. And I understand from Derek we have some Q&A. Yeah, Thank so you. We, we could, if you have a question, raise your hand. Anything you want to know from a recruiter? And then I'll walk around and, oh, we got a question up here. Hi, Colin. Thanks Hi. very much. Um, tell us a little bit more about the online portfolio. It looks to me like a website. Okay. And so just sure, expand sure. on that. Sure, sure. So, so everybody should write this down. Uh, Wix, I'm sure you've seen it on TV. Everybody go to Wix.com. Okay. That is the place where it's all plug and play. It's a templated website. And Wix would be a great place to do your, port you know, your online portfolio. Online portfolios, when I talk to people, they always say to me, uh, Colin, I thought that was just for creatives, right? <clears throat> it's for project managers, it's for engineers, it's for anybody. And then obviously using the case study format, when you, again, like I told you, in the, in the, when you're doing the resume, <clears throat> those impact statements you're making in your resume, then it comes to life visually. And I definitely, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, the triple threat is a formula that I know works because I'm a headhunter. I know it works and I see the success of it. A lot of people don't have a cover letter and they certainly don't have an online portfolio. And the resume usually, uh, for better lack of words, uh, sucks, you know, a lot of the time. And, but I, that's my value. I help people, I help them rewrite it. Uh, again, a lot of people are very paragraph driven. So the online portfolio, I feel, is an ability to, to give that visualization of all your work. Does that make sense? It really works. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Question, question. So I'm curious, like, uh, when you're hiring people, yeah. what, are, what are a few of the top um, criteria that you really look for so you know you're getting a good employee or someone that you really comfortable placing? What, what are some of the, I know this is slightly different from your talk, but I know you're experiencing this. Well, not really. Um, I talked about, you know, accomplishments, you know, part of that career story narrative. I talked about um, having letters of recommendation. I can't tell you how many people don't have letters of recommendation. The first thing I do to qualify myself to people is I say, I have 80 recommendations on LinkedIn. When you go meet an employer, you, you're qualifying yourself big time by having uh, letters of recommendation. So what you're asking me, Derek, is you know, what are some of the elements that I'm looking for? I'm looking for what I said, preparedness. Be prepared. I'm looking for you to have your information memorized so that you can express it to me in a clear format. Uh, I mentioned in this presentation that many people explain themselves in a very <coughs> fragmented way. Okay? That is the, that, you know, by, by being prepared, having a narrative, having the cover letter, having the resume, having the website. These are all tools to optimize your success. Does that make sense to everybody? And, and most people don't have a narrative. They don't have their story, more or less. People express themselves in a very dry way. You know, this is what I did. You know, this is where I worked. You need to turn it, you need to animate. And those elements of memorization, being prepared, working hard at your brand, if you go to my blog, uh, changingfast.com, I write a column in the free press, and I think you'll find a lot of that information very informative. And you know, ultimately, this is just a few modules of how you brand yourself. But I, but I thought through when I came here, I said, you know, I have a short amount of time. I want to get across you know, some effective ways of how to be successful in your career. And I definitely think, you know, like the career journaling, I mean, has anybody ever thought of doing that? The career journaling? No. And it's so easy. Every Friday, all you have to do is review what you've done that week, 
upload it. You know how many times, it actually has blown my mind. I, you know, obviously I'm not gonna name names. I, I have called on, you know, digital people that are very well known in the business. I'll say, hey, can you send me an updated resume? And then they say, well, I'll have to go home and get it off my computer. Like, what? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense to me. You could easily have all your information up in Dropbox. I don't know, is anybody familiar with Dropbox? Okay, I love Dropbox, okay? It, you, can create, you can create folders, you can create just a hot link on any file. You don't even have to send the file. I mean, you can have big files. All you gotta do is just send the link to somebody, they just click on it, and boom, they can download it, go right to it. Um, the, the elements that I've been discussing today are really about you optimizing yourself as a brand. If that makes sense. It's, it's, it's being more prepared for opportunity. And most importantly, getting introspective about, well, who am I? Where was I? You know, just at the beginning of the presentation, I explained, you know, this is the fundamentals of a great story, why we're drawn to a story. I'm trying to get you to understand that you sort of need to convert yourself in that manner. Yes? Okay, so, so I have a comment and then a question. So on your, on your career journal comments, which I, I think is fantastic, but yeah. something that you didn't mention, which I think is relevant, sure. is that compiling the career journal itself, mm -hmm. chances are will keep you focused on what you're actually trying to achieve in your job. Because yeah. at, at the end of the week, if you didn't have anything to say, that's a signal to yourself that I'm not actually moving towards my ultimate targets here. Exactly. So even if you didn't need it for marketing, even if you just want to stay in your own job, it's going to keep you focused on what are my targets and am I meeting those targets. Absolutely. I can't agree with you more. I mean, obviously in the presentation I mentioned a few things, but definitely grow that list of questions you want to ask yourself every Friday. You know, what phone calls, you know. And like I said, a lot of the caveats, uh, which I learned from people through teaching them this, is, yeah, I had, you know, my boss accused me of, of something I didn't do. And because I documented and I had all that information up in my Dropbox, I was easily able to present to my boss that that wasn't true. Or, like I said, when you go in for a review uh, for a job, I mean, obviously we all want to raise, right? Well, if you can prove to your employer over the last six months, three months, <clears throat> quantitatively, qualitatively, I mean, that's sort of the flavor here. I mean, I, I use that word a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, I, 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 I'm making a very, we, they want results. Employers want your results. They don't want to hear anything else. They want to see what you contributed historically in your career. And again, to reinforce that career narrative, you're, you're building just like those elements of the career story. You, you, you want all those different elements involved in it. So, Matt, so my, my question yes. is, my, um, what, what are the trends that you're seeing at the moment for which areas of, are, are hiring and which are not hiring? Great question. Uh, what's it called? Gov? There's a great website. I wrote an article about it. But to answer your question, I'm very analytical. I call myself the analytical headliner. Okay? So, I'll give you an example, like a case study. Okay, many kids go to school, and, and, and this is for anybody, if they have kids and they're about to send their kids to college. You know, there's two lies that a parent taught their kids. <clears throat> Do what you love and you'll be happy, and if you get good grades, you'll be successful. That's just not true, okay? <laughs> because, <laughs> Up to your answer, meaning if, if you do the data, so let's say you go to school in a history major, right? You come out and you're working at Starbucks. Now there's nothing wrong with working at Starbucks. I'm not trying to demean anybody, but the point is is that your parent, you're, you're $120,000 in debt and, and you don't have a job. So there's, there's government websites, like for instance, Indeed. Indeed has a whole analytical charts on the bottom. You ever heard of Indeed? Indeed is a job. Well, a lot of people don't realize on the bottom, there is an analysis to show you where things are trending. So my point is, is that there's data out there to show you where things are growing, where things are hot. There's a, there's a subject I wrote about in, in, in the free press recently that's controversial. I, I was talking about, is it, is it really uh, all that valuable to go to college? And the reason I wrote it is, 
is mobile developers, okay? There's a course, so if you have an aptitude, right, for development, so A, in the article, which you can read, uh, you go to school for four years, you're $120,000 in debt, you've got a computer engineering degree, or you can go to two or three of these very reputable mobile uh, development schools, and they guarantee you after, I think it's like uh, eight weeks or 10 weeks, it's $16,000, so it's not that cheap. But these kids are coming out of these certification programs making 100K, okay? So that answers the question that, you know, you wanna go where things are in high growth. Indeed, like I said, has a tool on the bottom where you type in the title, and you can see if that's trending up or trending down. I mean, some of the things are pretty easy. Healthcare, digital, are all in high growth. But certainly, uh, if you love something, learn to love something through research and, and, and go towards that versus something you just naturally love and think because you love it, uh, if you're dependent on it financially, you're gonna learn to hate it, if that makes sense. Did that answer your question? Uh, well, somewhat. I just, I'm just wondering what you thought was, what was hard? Yeah, what, what are you seeing high through, growth? through your work and seeing is the highest? Oh, I think most of the ball pack, models of Alberta. That's one of them. Um, I'm placing a lot of analytical people. And the analytical family, again, um, I can't think of the government website right now, but there's a government website that breaks down what school to go to, what companies to work for. Um, it's people here, man, I'm gonna give it to you. But a lot of high growth is analytics. And in analytics, you have statisticians, which sounds really boring, but, uh, and then analysts. And then a lot of people that I'm placing are what they call analytic strategists. And obviously, if you're in the digital business, you, <laughs> everything is coming down to data modeling and analytics. So uh, I'm finding myself consumed with that. Another thing is Indeed is a litmus, the website is a litmus. You do job searches. You'll see in those graphs, you'll see, well, okay, uh, mobile developers, high growth. Analytics, high growth. You can, just by doing a little bit of an analysis of, of even what these job sites are looking for, will tell you where things are trending. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Who else has a question? Here we go. Well, it's not so much a question, but I've got one of those daughters who's just out of college and needs yes. a job. So can, can we get those slides? Um, I can send you some of the information if you request it, like the cover letter, the resume. Just an outline of what you need to Absolutely, absolutely. You know, another thing, uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm in my 50s now, but you know, I'm a little bit of a stickler on telling young people about just having manners. You know, uh, you know, these kids come up to me today and they do this sort of like fishy shake. You know, right there I'm like sort of turned off. You know, so I even do this class where I teach you, you know, when you come in to shake a hand, hit, you know, hit here first, then come in with a strong handshake. Uh, a lot of young people today not only uh, need help with, you know, where to find a job, but they also need preparation and, and how to present themselves, you know, using the right etiquette. But sure, yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Questions? So you talked a little bit about the story and having great career stories. So tell us the best career story you've heard from a candidate in the past year. Hmm. Great career story from a candidate. Well, a lot of the data that I give you is based off of observations. Uh, people that, uh, so for instance, I'm very analytical. So. My mom did it for 40 years, I've done it for 25 years. Um, over time, because of the position I'm in, working with so many different companies and so many different people, I have the ability to start to see, you know, why are these people successful? And why are these people not successful? And there's certain characteristics, which I was trying to show you today, of, of what makes people very successful. I definitely think, um, in general, uh, people, uh, in, uh, not only in this year, but any year, uh, people that are uh, up on their LinkedIn profile, uh, leveraging and utilizing social networks to build your brand. You'll see when you go to my website and a lot of the articles I write in the Detroit Free Press, <coughs> you'll find that it's all about branding. It's all about exposing yourself. It's all about, you know, a lot of people say to me, I'll say, you know, I really want you to write your resume 
as if you have the biggest ego in the world. And a lot of people naturally here in the Midwest push back on that, especially not so much out in LA. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, if, you, if you're gonna have an ego, have an ego when it comes to your career, if that makes sense. Um, I'd rather you have you over the top uh, explaining yourself uh, like you have the biggest head in the world than, than you minimizing yourself. Um, so I believe the candidates that are very successful are people that are promoting themselves constantly. You know, promoting yourself personally and talking about personal things, yeah, I think that's a big turnoff. But promoting yourself, you know, I spoke at or, you know, showing visual case studies online of your newest thing, I think that's the elements of creating uh, a successful career. I didn't, I didn't give you one specific person, but I was trying to give you in general what I think creates a successful person. Colin, yeah. you know, the benefit of doing this, um, it sounds like to me, is that if you do this type of work, so if you tell your story properly, yes. you'll get hired and you'll get paid more. Is that pretty much Abs it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then obviously be in a high growth area, um, like this gentleman said. You know, obviously, uh, my mom taught me, you know, when people call you and you, can, and, and you can't place them, at least you can offer um, some assistance on what they need to do, but definitely a recruiter or any company is going to find people more attractive if they're in arenas that are hot. And again, I do a whole thing on competitive intelligence, and I wrote, I've written several articles on it, and I really encourage everybody to go look, but definitely getting more into research, competitive intelligence, uh, I use one of my tenets in my programs I teach is don't reinvent the wheel, okay? So LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. If you're looking to write a better resume, start looking at profiles of people that write them really well, right? Um, when you're looking for a job, just don't look for a job here in Michigan. Look to see what the jobs are in New York and LA. Start reading the job descriptions. Cross-reference them. Start researching companies. <coughs> Look at the employees under those titles at those companies, like I showed you that, that trick for yourself, okay? This is gonna optimize you and empower you with uh, better branding yourself and drawing parallels to any opportunity that comes your way. And most importantly, going through all these different, this is, you know, I can't explain everything in this presentation, but going through these steps is gonna allow you to increase your odds of being much more successful in your career. Does that make sense? I have one more question based yeah. on compensation. So what do you think about the concept of that you should set someone's pay rate not based on years of experience or seniority but on level of productivity? Say that again. Okay, so you should set someone's salary or pay somebody mm -hmm. not based on years of experience mm -hmm. but based on their output and productivity. Right, and that's where the career journaling can get, can, so you have an employee right there. Right. Somebody comes and sits down with you and says, you know, I've been recording pretty much everything I've done, and they, and they show it to you in a PowerPoint presentation. You're going to feel more inclined, even you as the, the owner of the company. You know, you, you might not remember all the things your employees are doing, but if your employees <laughs> remembers all of it and re-reminds you, uh, it might change your mind in giving that person a raise. So. Right, that's so you're basically showing us how to demonstrate the productivity. Right. So we can maybe have a couple years of experience and look right. at what we did. Right. Or can accomplish. Right. Right. The career journal, like I said, can help you in so many ways. I mean, like this gentleman said, it's just giving you that confidence of either or not confidence. It's either telling you, "Wow, I'm not doing much." You know, um, a quick example. A lot of people say, "Well, yeah, I took this job because it paid a lot of money," but if the company that you're working for isn't going to allow you to be results driven, then two years later, even though you made more money, two years later, you're actually not going to make that money anymore, right? Because you didn't have uh, the quantitative results that you need to keep moving forward in your career. So sometimes actually taking a step back and working at a company that can help you with your narrative and story is going to be way more effective and, and help you move forward in your career. I mean, ultimately, everything that I teach people is trying to increase your odds of being more successful. And again, this is a short presentation. I encourage everybody to go to my blog. I'm changing press, read a lot of the free press articles. 
I talk about, you know, I have other blog articles too, but I definitely think I pulled together all the different modules of how to be successful in your career. Awesome. All right, do we have any more questions or should we go to introductions? All right, let's give our speaker a big round of applause. Tell him a Thank you, sir. Wonderful talk. Uh, Colin will be up here if you do have questions afterwards. And now we get to go around the room and introduce ourselves. So I ask that you stand up, speak proudly, project, and uh, like Colin would do, you know, firm handshake. But you gotta, we got to project here. We have a microphone. But uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and uh, real brief, and then we'll go all the way around the room. And we're going to start right up here. I'll probably turn this down just a smidge, but you can start. Uh, Doug Wood, uh, I am a freelance art director, um, and my Woodman design is my, my company. Hi, I'm Kate Billerbeck, I'm the um, content manager at uh, with Derek over at Index. <coughs> Hi, Laura Kirchner, and I head up client accounts at Index. Hi, Peter Spa. I'm a uh, digital strategist and have been doing this for around 20 years. Hi, I'm Dee Davey. I'm a services marketing professional. I help business to business companies improve their marketing performance and their service revenues. I do this through strategic market planning, product development and management, and product marketing. When I'm not developing cool sales tools to drive revenue, I'm improving business processes and streamlining operations. Last week, I was laid off, and so I am now searching for my next job role. Dee Daly, I would appreciate your support. Thank you. Well, hi, I'm uh, Mike Cooley. I'm a photographer in a small business called My Sure Fun. Hi, my name is Lev Wood, and I work for a company called MS2. We're software developers here in town. We have a specialty niche uh, developing software uh, for the transportation industry. Uh, if you are or if you have a friend who is uh, a, um, an experienced software engineer, we are looking to hire at least one software engineer in our company here, so see me afterwards if you do or if you are. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Gallagher, and I do not have a fishy handshake. <laughs> Uh, I am currently looking for a sales or sales team management position where I can help elevate the revenues of a company but yet keep an eye on their profit. And I do this through fact-based selling or consultative selling. I'm known for uh, developing strategies for a company, uh, build reputations with the companies uh, with integrity, and uh, very analytical uh, type person. So if you know anybody that's looking to increase their business, I'm their guy. <laughs> Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Tom Tobin. I'm with AGC Automotive Americas. We're an automotive glass supplier to pretty much all the OEMs. Um, been with this company for uh, 20 years next month in multiple capacities from sales to program management to now uh, marketing department uh, person. So um, nice to be here today. Hi, I'm Shan Kolitz. I own Media Academica, a video and animation production company here in Ann Arbor. I uh, specialize in short web videos. Hi, I'm Karen Tuttle, and I work with Kleiser Design. We create honestly beautiful designs. And if you need help making an online portfolio, please give me a call. Hi, I'm Tasha Moore with Martopia Public Relations Group. <coughs> and I wanted to let everybody know about a monthly meetup that we do called PR Power Hour. Um, it's, Espresso <coughs> Royal, it's at Espresso Royale just down the street. Um, it'll be held on March 26th. Uh, this month from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And um, what, what we're talking about this month is helping get your company's story told um, with the media. And, uh, you know, if you have seen your competitors quoted in articles or you have seen your competitors on broadcast news being interviewed and uh, thought that that should be your company, uh, then I'd definitely uh, mark your calendars and stop by because we can, we can help you learn to uh, get, get your company out there with the media. 
Hello, Anne Marie Smith uh, from Indemnity Advocates. We do insurance claims and coverage consulting. I don't sell it, I just make it work better for you. Hi, my name is Chris Everly and I'm with ESB Digital right around the corner of downtown Ann Arbor. And we do, we're a digital marketing agency and we help companies like Sandals or Sephora with their paid and search display and just managing their campaigns online. Hi, my name is Greg Boggy. I'm formerly a scientist and I'm looking to get into more technical marketing activities. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Bobney. I'm the owner of Homebo Exhibit Specialist. Again, you take your trade show booth, put it on wheels, and take it around the U.S. Very cool, Tom. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mitty Matthews. Uh, I own my own company. It's, uh, I do photography directed for business. So I will help you tell your story when you need to do it, mostly for online. So I do virtual tours. I do products, 3D products that you might be able to manipulate online. But mostly my products are online and they're business to business. Hi, I'm Gavin Todd. I work with Tiny Mighty, which is focused on getting small, tiny companies um, niche content produced for them and out there. Hi, everybody. My name is Jim Musial. I am a uh, web and mobile development consultant, and I work with companies and individuals uh, on their website uh, and help it move towards mobility. So if you have a site and you need some help with mobility, I would love to talk to you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Pat Martz of Inquiry Solutions. We do technical communications. Um, I specialize in technical, well, it's not really specializing, all hats. Technical uh, graphic design and writing consulting. Um, I also work as an adjunct at LTU when I have a class, and I am the vice president of the Society for Technical Communications Global Chapter. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Curnow. Uh, I have a, a degree in technical writing, but I'm transitioning into medical administration. Now please indulge me. May the wind be always at your back. May the road rise up to meet you. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft on your fields. Until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. If you would like a slogan that like that, on a t-shirt, please come see Elmo. <laughs> and Elmo, and Elmo needs to t-shirts. Please recognize that I'm the brown Elmo, not the red one you see on TV. <laughs> How exactly do you follow that? <laughs> no, 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 well, no. but uh, there's a problem. We can't always so still have half the room. I'm uh, Bud Gibson. I created the search marketing program at Eastern Michigan University. Uh, Colin is right. A real explosion of people looking for folks with analytical skills. And uh, I really like the storytelling aspect of this. This is something we work with uh, with our students a lot. Hi, my name is Keith Carlson. I'm an information architect with Johnson & Johnson here in Ann Arbor. I'm Jim McBee. I'm the co-owner and designer for the Ann Magazine, local uh, news and culture magazine uh, that uh, distributes by inserting into the New York Times and uh, Wall Street Journal and other local papers. Good afternoon. I'm Jose Walker. I'm a personal trainer and massage therapist at A2 Fitness Professionals. I am also the creator and founder of Get With Get Fit, a uh, sportswear line coming soon. Hi, I'm Mara Poplin. These two guys are my trainers and they're fabulous. Um, I am other co-owner of the Ann Magazine and the Ann is always looking for topical news stories. So if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to see covered in the Ann or Ann Arbor, please let us know. Hello everybody, Damon Johnson, I own of A2 Fitness Professionals, which is a health and wellness personal training studio here in uh, Ann Arbor 250 West Eisenhower, that's my sales club. Um, and we'd love to have you stop on by for a free health and wellness assessment. My name is Ben Taub, I run a uh, 20 year old consultancy in, in, in firm that hosts uh, business intelligence and analytic systems. Um, and I, I actually have a problem, maybe someone can help me out with 
like a lot of consultants, we find that we get wrapped up in uh, delivering clients. And, and we're, frankly, we're really good at what we do. But while we're doing that, we're not selling. Uh, and so I'm looking right now for someone to have, someone or a firm to help us a develop a, a comprehensive marketing strategy and then actually execute that strategy. Uh, so if anybody has any ideas or does that kind of stuff and wants to talk after the meeting, please uh, pull me aside. Once again, my name is Ben Tall. Hi, my name is Samantha Crosby. I'm with Farm Bureau Insurance. I specialize in small businesses, um, working with workers' comp, general liability, and even uh, buy-sell agreements and key employee coverage. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham. I uh, work with Dexter Builders. And today I'm just here to try to plug the uh, Home, Garden, and Lifestyle Show. I don't know if anybody's heard about that. It's coming up next weekend. Uh, it's over 150 different booths, so if you have a home, you have a garden, it might be a good show to go to. And uh, here to give out free tickets on behalf of Dexter Builders. So if anybody's interested, swing by, go down there for free, and check out all the different booths and vendors that can, you know, style up your home. All right, thanks. Hi, I'm Christine Chapman, and I'm a marketing student at Eastern Michigan University. Hi, I'm Katie Chapman, I'm her sister. I'm also a marketing student at Eastern, and I'm here to network. Hi, I'm Jessica Lito. I'm the marketing director for three companies here in Ann Arbor, Metal Arc Builders, which is a custom green home builder and remodeler, um, Arbor Insulation, which is tuned to uh, home comfort, again with an emphasis on sustainability, and Aqua Channel, the, um, what's there, the uh, January sponsor for LA2M, and thank you for that. We got some pretty good sales out of it, so it was a fantastic opportunity. Um, I'm here because I was very interested in the topic, thank you Colin, um, and also because we're looking for somebody uh, part-time, temporary, so if you're looking, if you're between jobs and looking to pick up some projects for the next um, probably three months, um, I'd be happy to have you as part of my team. I'm looking for somebody who's comfortable with numbers um, and has some experience with metrics analysis, um, marketing experience desired but not necessary. And um, just another plug for the Brad Home and Garden Show. I would, uh, that was a great idea. I think that's great that you did that. I would like to point out that it's the Brad Home Garden and Lifestyle Show. So even if you don't have a home or a garden, I'm certain you have a lifestyle, and it will be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm Ashley Howard. I'm a junior at the University of Michigan, and I'm studying architecture and minoring in sustainability. Um, hi, I'm Vicki Elmer. Um, I'm a freelance writer, journalist. I write about business, careers, and quirkiness uh, for Fortune Magazine, Quartz Media, Washington Post, and a few others. Um, so this topic on careers was right up my alley. Greetings, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Sickles, and I'm colleagues with Tom at Asahi Glass, and I make advanced automotive technology on glass actually cool. <laughs> Hi, Mary Rosicki. I do sales and marketing. I'm currently with Beyond Startup. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, Jim Campbell from ExcitingProductions.com. Uh, recently, we worked with a student that was uh, applying for a Google Fellowship ideal. And uh, she came to us wanting a video to really tell her story so that she could get that scholarship. And if you're interested in uh, seeing that, uh, uh, go to my website, uh, email me, Jim Campbell, excitingproductions.com. Good morning, I'm Mark Bartram with Diversified Heating and Cooling. And I help build building owners and business, uh, um, sorry, building owners and homeowners who are frustrated with uh, uneven temperatures in their house, uh, concerned about uh, humidity problems in their building, and uh, frustrated with how their indoor air quality is affecting their health. Do so you know that I can help? Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Greenspan, and I am currently in the market for a new big idea that I can sell. I sell good ideas for the community. And I have done that for over 20 years in education, in health-related organizations, and also for the arts. So if you know of anything that you'd like to suggest to me, I'm all ears, and I have time. Hi, I'm Mary Wolves, and I am the uh, manager for LA2M. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Uh, 
and uh, things come. That was a really informative talk. I'm sure everyone got something out of that that was a real value to them. Um, also, thanks to our sponsor this month, uh, Ingenix Digital Marketing. Um, great company, and, and I'm sure that, that if you decided to work with Eric, you'll, you'll be thrilled with your results. And uh, thanks. <coughs> <laughs> Come on, Carter, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm Carter Sherlin from Flint Studios, and I'm the commercial editorial and portrait photographer, which covers everything from portraits you put up on your wall to product shots of, say, 18 wheeler trucks. Or I shoot a lot of uh, running into your brother. You've probably seen me facing the other direction with a big white lens in my face, or in your face. Um, Actually, there's a race here. I won't be shooting this one, actually, but um, Connor's sp uh, co sponsored the race that will be uh, on Sunday, uh, right out right out in front, um, by a kilometer, I believe, it runs past the football stadium in the back. Thank you, Carter. Yes, uh, Caroline wanted me to talk about the shamrocks and shenanigans. So, assuming that you wear your snow, snow running outfits. Um, Come around, it's a 5K run and walk, and last year they raised over $55,000 for like some U of M heart clinic or something. So here's the information. You want to go run with the Irish people. Um, thanks for being here today. I, I love the turnout. I love the energy. I love the energy. I am. Um, what a diverse, wonderful group of people. And uh, great questions too. Yeah, great questions. Great questions. So. So what I want to tell you, well, I'm Derek Maramont, CEO of Jack Digital Marketing. You, you've heard from me. You've heard from me. Um, next week, i got to tell you about next week. Next week, I'm expecting a bigger crowd, if you can believe that. But uh, the head of marketing for University of Michigan is going to be here, Lisa Rogers. So that's pretty interesting, because we have uh, U of M is next week, and then MSU is in two weeks, right? The head of marketing for both universities. So very high level, high caliber speakers. I'm hoping we can get some representation from both schools. Uh, feel free to wear your colors next week for the U of M one, and then in two weeks we got the Spartan one, you know, with the Spartan. So wear your colors for that. So um, that's going to be for the future, which is going to be awesome, right? And uh, I don't know, let's give our speaker one last round of applause. Kyle. And uh, thanks everyone for your generosity. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week, all right? Have a good week. Thanks.